This is PSB 307 Principles and Techniques in Plant Biotechnology. Our first topic is the definition and concepts. You need to familiarize yourself with everything about the new course. So when we say plant biotechnology, we are talking about manipulating the DNA in plants. Thank God you have an idea from your bio 211 class what genetics is the genes, the DNA, and the chromosome. We already know that they are like the codes that govern life processes. So scientists discover that if you can control all these codes, you can therefore control the way the plant or the living organism behave. When we are focusing on plant biotechnology, we are just trying to manipulate the DNA codes or the genes to make sure we get what we want. And so that is plant genetic modification or plant genetic engineering or plant biotechnology. So it allows scientists to introduce new genes into plants to modify, to remove, just to play around with the genes to get what they want. And so because of that, we have new crops, new varieties, crops that can um, that are resistant to diseases, that have increasing nutritional content, tolerance to environmental stress, and um, all other things. So there are some aspects you need to understand. That is uh, genetic modification, which is basically the same thing as plant biotechnology. Um, then we have um, the tissue culture and cloning. Genome addicting, marker assisted selection, molecular farming, plant disease diagnosis. So when you come to class, I'm going to be explaining all of these concepts to you. But you can just jot them down because it can come out in your exams. There are some concepts in plant biotechnology you need to understand. And some of them are genetic modification. The is it's just like the name plus modify. When you say you want to modify something, it means you want to change something. So when you want to introduce new genes into the plant or you want to delete, you are changing the plant. It's basically what biotechnology is all about. So recombinant DNA technology is like rec from the word recombinant, you are adding two separate DNA together. Like a DNA from a source and under DNA, you want to combine them together to improve the plants. So it's a technique of combining DNA from different sources to create a new old variety. That is recombinant DNA technology. Then of course we have um transgenic crops. Any crop that has been modified is called a transgenic crop. For example, you can also call them GM, that is genetic modified organisms, GMO. Or you can say GM. So if I say this is a GM rice, I'm telling you that the rice has been genetically modified. In other words, the rice is a transgenic crop. Genome addicting. In, in this one, you're using tools. I'm going to explain the tools in the class. This CRO, this CRISPR, Cas9. Imagine you're using a scissors to cut a piece of clothing. Then you're adding something else. So we use enzymes. Scientists use enzymes like Cas9 to cut like molecular scissors and then they edit the genome to whatever they want. And so we have tissue culture and cloning. With the help of tissue culture, uh, imagine your photocopy machine. You know when you have just one paper, you can photocopy a lot of, um, a lot of papers from just the original. That is what tissue culture is. So you can take a leaf, a root, or any part of a plant and generates many copies of that particular plant. You don't have, a, have to go through the stress of planting the seeds, trying to water it, making it to grow. No, you can develop the plants from any part of the plant. And that is what tissue culture and cloning. That's why it's called cloning. It's all about. And so marker assisted selection is using DNA markers, biochemical markers, morphological markers to know a particular traits in a plant. So we have a RNA interference is a mechanism that regulates gene expression by silencing specific genes 
through the introduction of small RNA molecules. So, for example, you say, ah, I don't want this uh, bitterness in this lemon. So, you can mask the, there's a gene for, ev the thing you need to know is that for every phenotype, there's a gene responsible for it. For everything you can see in a living organism, there's a gene for that, your skin color, for your eye color. So, what, like, scientists say, ah, I don't like this, um, this bitterness in this lemon, sour taste. Let me mask the gene responsible for that particular um, exp um, expression. So they mask it using small RNA molecules, and that's why it's called an interference, RNA interference, RNAi. Molecular family is using plants specifically to produce pharma pharmaceuticals like uh, insulin, and some other products that like they are like drugs, but instead of going to the market to buy drugs, the drugs will be coming out from the plant directly. Instead of going to the hospital, for example, to take insulin injection, you can just take insulin corn and start eating it. <laughs> so it's it's a wonderful concept for molecular farming. So all these are concepts in pl plant biotechnology. We have crop improvements. When you are improving the crop, it means you are making the crop to be enhanced in other words the crop can do what it would not be able to do normally or naturally so for example let's say the plants or the crop was susceptible to a particular disease but because you have improved the crop genetically the crop becomes resistant so plant disease diagnostics is an important um, part of plant biotechnology because normally when there is a disease in a plant you, a farmer will not know unless he starts seeing some symptoms and it may be too late. But because of plant disease diagnostics, even without any symptoms, you can detect that this plant has a particular disease very, very early. They even use it for COVID-19, PCRO um, technology and all of that. So with plant disease diagnosis, you can detect what is wrong with a particular plant even before the plant starts showing symptoms. So we have a uh, plant conservation, biofortification. Um, I I may throw more light on this in class. You can just pause the video to to read it. But it's just basically the name is as simple as a biofortification. You are introducing new nutrients to a particular plant or crop just to fortify it or make it better or to increase its nutritional value or something. Then for plant conservation, you are trying to conserve the DNA of a plant so that you can always clone it probably in the future using tissue culture or something. So we have banks like germplasm banks where they keep the seeds, the leaves of a particular plant, all of that just to maintain the genetic diversity. Epigenetics is a study, I think we did epigenetics last time in our bio 211 class. Yes, and it was the last thing we talked about. The study of heritable changes in gene expression that not involve alteration. So what that English is saying basically is that there are some things that are from the environment that can affect the, the DNA, although it may not be inheritable, but um, it still affects the DNA in a way. And so synthetic biology is a unique field because... Scientists will study machines and try to mimic that in living things, trying to produce living things that are following the principles of engineering. For example, I think they introduced the gene in a spider and into a sick worm to make the worm produce stronger sick or something. So you are just playing with natural others. <laughs> the issue of biotechnology is a, is a very big issue. Because there are some issues. People will feel like you don't need to play with nature. Let nature be preserved the way God has created it to be. Don't play with the genes. So there, there are people like that. And there are also people that are saying, why, if we can use technology to, you know, uh, produce what we want, why should we not play with the genes? So synthetic biology, you can go and read more. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an emerging field in the era of plant biotechnology. Okay, so we have metabolic engineering. Like... Um, you know, every living organism has a metabolic pathway that produces a very important chemical. So if scientists are able to manipulate these pathways, they can produce what they want whenever they want it. 
and so that is what metabolic engineering is all about origin of plant biotechnology the key words you just need to pick you know history can be so boring i will not lie to you so this is what i advise my students you don't need to write everything just pick the uh, the year or the time period and then pick one particular thing that happened you don't need to write everything for example now if you look at this place it said the origins of plant biotechnology can be traced back to the early time. just say in the 20th century research started in biotechnology go to the next one in the 1970s i even did a red font for you just say 1970s that was the foundation of plant biotechnology recombinant dna technology was discovered simple do you understand so you just pick what you want what when it happened for example in 1983 a bacterial gene was introduced into tobacco plants you need to note what happened in 1983 then all those stories that touches there's no need for all of those uh -huh. so this is like a summary of everything that i have been saying before 20th century 1970s 1983 1990 what happened in 1990s okay new discoveries were made just write new discoveries were made so form your notes okay so you go to 1994 that is important the first gm plant crop was found that is flower sour tomato okay that tomato is it's it's a it's a nice concept i may not be able to explain much when we get to class i will tell you just remind me ask me the question in class about the tomato i will explain more on it then in late 1990s other countries started accepting it in the 2000s marker assisted selection was introduced early 2000s the rna AI technology that i've explained before the interference yes started then what happened again in 2010 you need to tell me what happened in 2020s just like that you can pause the video just pick what you want okay so um there are some issues in plant biotechnology some people say that genetically modified organisms um they may not be accepted because i don't know what like you are not sure of what is going to cause in your body or something so there's public perception about it it's, it's an issue why would you give me a tomato that does not go bad for for years or for months how am i going to know it is safe so that there's that public frown at it is an issue then there's regulatory and policy challenges different countries i think have different um policies and apart from that the commercialization of these um products they may be there are lots of regulations about it that may discourage researchers from you know making money out of them and all of that so um resist resist resistant development like because of you are trying to manip manipulate a plant to be resistant to a crop you don't know what will happen if the resistance can lead to development of more pests and diseases that are in turn that will develop new resistance to your crop you know all this crop they have a way of adapting so if they see that uh, they cannot attack this crop i saw this crop sorry all the these um organisms this pests and diseases they may also adapt and become even more virulent so crop diversity and mono monoculture um if genetically modified crops are produced on a large scale that means now overpopulating even the natural or white types is going to bring about monoculture that means we'll just have one variety of genetically modified plants and this is going to <laughs> make the crop to be vulnerable to pests and diseases is an issue is an issue and so we have a uh, intellectual protect pr property rights you can read on that we have gene flow and environmental concerns you can read on that we have unintended consequences ethics and social issues you can just pause and read on that if you don't, if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section
then we have technology gaps and the expensive research and development yes it's very expensive is an issue and there are lots of technology gaps we really do not know what we are playing with yeah we are just trying to research and get more but it's an emerging topic it's, it, there's, there's a room for a lot of research in the area of plant biotechnology thank you very much for watching the video um please pay attention in class and do my assignment in our next video we are going to be using a lot of diagrams to explain some concepts in plant biotechnology thank you very much bye bye